Good morning, folks. We're going to have fun today. We'll hit earthquakes, places of interest, an anomaly on the stereo satellite, the solar system circuit, and the galactic magnetic field. We're starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun with the southern bright active region beginning to demand one's eyes as it turns into earth-facing heliographic longitudes behind a wall of coronal holes. But the active region, while still crackling this morning, has had the longer trailing line of umbral cores dissipate. A small leading spot does remain, is magnetically connecting to surface magnetic areas around the spot. The solar wind from the coronal holes is on its way to Earth, but right now all is calm in the stream telemetry. The top note is the phi angle flip up top again in blue. We are likely to see impact from the southern coronal hole middle of the week. Top quake of the last day without question was offshore in California. It was indeed four times stronger than the second most powerful quake yesterday. Eyes open for more here and we'll also note the surge of four shocks in Oceania, including a number of blot echoes. And we also had a blot echo in Romania yesterday, so the atmospheric signal taking on the south of that in the coming hours will also be catching our attention. By the way, our blot echo wind map is on the prediction center at quakewatch.net. Folks, for some reason, this debunker makes people more angry than most, but alas, the P-shaped screw pattern reflection anomaly is back on stereo again. I just want to repeat what I said in 2016, so I guess we'll go back to that morning news from over three years ago. So folks, we've gone most of the year without having to debunk silly satellite fears, but we knew it wouldn't last forever. Over the last month, the net has been clamoring about this artifact seen on stereo AHI2, well, folks, every time bright Venus gets in the frame at that angle, it reflects off a piece of the telescope and makes that shape. This is the first occurrence back in 2007, and it has happened a couple times since then. If you actually look at the PDF of the scope design, you can look down and see the piece shaped exactly like that. As we come back to today, I will take a moment to remind everyone that all of these satellite images go through DOD, DHS, Lockheed, and NASA before they get to us, so something like an alien spaceship ain't getting through on here. Folks, there are plenty of lies, dangers, conspiracies. We've got 99 problems, but this glitch ain't one. We're on to the ubiquity of magnetic reconnection and flux transfer events, and we must of course recall Alphane's version of reconnection, which is combining currents or current sheets that disrupt a circuit and release the energy of that circuit at the point of disruption. It's a small but important distinction from how it's currently described as frozen in field lines magnetically reconnecting. These circuit connections are indeed common in flux transfer events, where along the curving interplanetary magnetic field that connects the Sun to all the planets, exchanges of plasma are made back and forth on various time scales. On Earth, that's every eight minutes. Now, what's key here is not to think of the polar cusps in the way that science has since their deviation from Alphane decades ago, as tunnels or secret passages that the solar plasma can sneak through directly down into the atmosphere. Well, while that is the end result, it is instead a direct coupling region at the geophysical transformer of space energy. It's a solar system circuit, not disconnected spheres. We move on to the galactic magnetic field. It's probably actually a galactic system circuit. And a quick recap before we dive in. What for years was thought to be a random, chaotic, mostly nova-driven structure, modern understanding is now transforming galactic magnetic fields into more coherent large-scale forms, from outflows to light polarization to stellar jet alignments and more. They are seeing that it is a giant system, scalable just like the fields of the sun, earth, and even your kid's bar magnet toy. And the key aspect of that is the equatorial region where the outflow aspect occurs. Earth has equatorial ion wind, the Sun sure has ion wind, and the galactic plane is no different. This means that they take on Parker spiral forms, like the solar wind and spiral galaxies themselves, and the field waves, ripples, undulates. When Earth crosses the Sun's sheet, we get a planet-wide magnetic disruption and induced electric currents. Now hold that thought, because we move on to learn that indeed the central plane field has been mapped and detected outward from the galactic center, and with up to 45 degree swings in direction back and forth, uh, that would be a waveform. And so how far does the waveform go? We have presumed that it goes throughout most of the galactic disk, including where the sun sits, but it'd be nice to know for sure, especially for the implications for when our sun would cross it. And for that, we look to see how far out in the Milky Way magnetic fields can be detected. 
Turns out it's a long way. The second brightest globular cluster in the sky sits next to the small Magellanic Cloud. It's basically almost another dwarf galaxy itself sits beyond the galactic disk out in the galactic halo around the Milky Way and indeed some of the globe's most respected names in astronomy publishing in the prestigious Nature Collection have declared that the galactic fields indeed go out all the way. The implication of the summary, the thought we're holding, and the extent of the waving fields we got confirmed today is that the sun crosses the galactic sheet in a cycle just like the earth crosses the suns. For what happens when the sun takes that total sphere magnetic disruption, induced electric current, and connection with the galactic interstellar magnetic fields? Well, it took us 14 months and 45 videos to detail every last drop but you have to start somewhere. The Cosmic Disaster Earth Catastrophe Cycle playlist is found in the description box below this video here on YouTube, along with all the other links. So if you have wondered what links I'm always talking about, by the way, look right below the video player on YouTube. More information about every video and sources to help empower your digging of rabbit holes and illuminating of light bulbs. We greatly appreciate your support. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org. For more on Alphane and the proper space weather science, please check out yesterday's Deeper Look episode. Should mean even more to you now after watching today's show. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.